Every 14 minutes and 31 seconds, another piece of the Pacific Ring of Fire fractures. Starting in the Philippines, stress waves are racing through the Earth's crust at 8 kilometers per second, reaching fault zones in Malaysia, Indonesia, Taiwan, Japan, and even Australia. What began as a regional earthquake swarm has become a planetary scale mechanical failure. Seismologists have detected something that defies every geological model. Earthquake energy from the Philippines is literally triggering fault movement in six other countries. The big one isn't a single event anymore. It's a cascading chain of mega earthquakes, each one creating tsunamis that compound with the next. And the pattern is accelerating. When tectonic stress travels faster than tsunami warning systems, how do you protect seven different coastlines simultaneously? What happens if multiple countries experience their big one within hours of each other? And why are scientists now calling this the first truly international geological disaster? The Philippines doesn't just sit on fault lines, it is the fault line. Imagine standing at the center of a cosmic collision. Four massive tectonic plates converge beneath the Philippine archipelago in the most complex collision zone on Earth. The Philippine sea plate diving eastward the Pacific Plate shoving west, the Eurasian Plate pressing south, and the Sunda Plate pushing north. This creates a geological pressure cooker where stress has nowhere else to go but out. For centuries, this unique configuration has made the Philippines one of the most seismically active regions on the planet. Normally, we would see about 100 measurable earthquakes yearly, with roughly 20 causing damage. The rhythm was predictable, Earthquakes every few days releasing tension gradually in isolated events with regional impacts and local tsunami threats. But 2025 has shattered that pattern completely. What we're witnessing now is unprecedented. Since January, microquake activity has more than doubled from previous years. In September alone, we saw the devastating magnitude 6.9 Cebu earthquake that killed at least 79 people. Just 10 days later in October, a magnitude 7.4 quake struck Mindanao, followed by a magnitude 6.9 aftershock within hours, a rare doublet earthquake that killed at least 10 people and injured over 1,000. But here's what's truly alarming. These aren't isolated incidents. Advanced monitoring systems are detecting powers something never before documented. Each earthquake isn't just a singular event, it's loading stress onto neighboring fault systems in a synchronized pattern. For the first time, we're seeing seismic evidence of a mechanical connection spanning across the entire Western Pacific, as Dr. Deo Carlo Lamas at the Philippine Institute. The Institute of Volcanology and Seismology explains, each quake relieves tension in one area but simultaneously redistributes stress to neighboring faults like a chain reaction. It's a process that never truly ends, a heartbeat that pulses beneath the entire archipelago. What we're seeing is Coulomb stress transfer on an international scale, and it's happening faster than our warning systems can react. When a major earthquake strikes, it doesn't just affect the local area, it sends shockwaves through the entire planet at speeds that make supersonic jets look slow. Most people think earthquakes are isolated events, energy released, job done, but that's not how our planet works. What scientists call Coulomb stress transfer is the process by which seismic energy from one earthquake literally pushes on distant fault lines, fundamentally changing their stability. And it happens fast. Stress waves travel through Earth's crust at eight kilometers per second. This isn't theoretical, we've seen it before. The 1992 Landers earthquake in California triggered quakes across multiple US states. The 2012 Indian Ocean magnitude 8.6 created cascading elastic perturbations affecting Japan. The 2004 Sumatra tsunami affected fault systems across the Pacific. But what's happening now in the Philippines is different. It's bigger, faster, and synchronized across international boundaries. 
Modern seismic analysis reveals that the Philippines sits at the center of what scientists are now calling a mechanical network spanning the Pacific. Seven major fault systems are responding to Philippine earthquake activity in real time. The Sundar megathrust in Indonesia is showing increased microquake activity. The Manila Trench in the South China Sea is experiencing dangerous stress accumulation. Japan's Nankai Trough is displaying preliminary fracture signals. Taiwan's Philippine Sea Plate boundary has elevated seismic background activity. The Banda Sea Faults at the Australia-Indonesia border are experiencing stress field changes. Malaysian Peninsula Faults show unprecedented activity levels. And the New Guinea subduction zone has synchronized pressure variations. What's most alarming is the speed of transfer. Previous Coulomb stress strength, Rapani Chebri, Man of Force, stress events took days or weeks to propagate. The 2025 patterns are happening in minutes to hours. This is a terrifying revelation for seismologists. Fault systems we thought were separate and independent are actually connected through stress transfer networks. When the Philippines shakes, the entire Western Pacific responds almost instantaneously. October 2025 marked the first time in recorded history that seven countries detected simultaneous seafloor pressure changes from a single earthquake swarm. On November the 2nd at 4.23 a.m., tsunami detection buoys from the Philippines to Japan registered synchronized pressure anomalies, not from waves, but from coordinated seafloor movement. The monitoring data is unprecedented. The Philippines has recorded over 847 earthquakes in the past 30 days, compared to a normal average of 8 to 12. Indonesia's Banda Sea is showing a 300% increase in background seismicity. Malaysia has recorded first ever seismic activity in historically quiet zones. Taiwan's Philippine Sea Plate boundary is experiencing micro ruptures. Japan's Nankai Trough is showing stress accumulation patterns. Northern Australia is detecting distant pressure signals. Papua New Guinea's seismic timing has synchronized with Philippine earthquakes. When we map this activity, a disturbing pattern emerges. When the Philippines experiences a major earthquake, stress waves propagate through the Earth's crust in a predictable sequence. Within five minutes, local tsunami generation. Within five to 15 minutes, stress reaches Indonesian fault systems. Within 15 to 30 minutes, Malaysian Peninsula faults respond. Within 30 to 60 minutes, Taiwan and southern Japan detect changes. Within one to three hours, Australian continental margin responds. Within three to six hours, full Pacific ring of fire stress redistribution. According to Dr. Ross Stein from the USGS, we're witnessing earthquake clustering on an international scale. The Philippines isn't just triggering local events, it's mechanically connected to fault systems across the entire Western Pacific. The acceleration factor is what's most concerning. What typically took hours in previous events is now happening in minutes. The 2025 swarm isn't just stronger, it's faster, creating cascading failures across multiple countries before warning systems can respond. When multiple countries experience earthquakes simultaneously, their tsunamis don't just add up, they multiply. The traditional tsunami model is simple. One earthquake creates one tsunami wave train. But what happens when seven different source points generate tsunamis within hours of each other? The physics is horrifying. Waves from different earthquakes can combine through constructive interference, creating what scientists call wave superposition areas where tsunami heights multiply rather than add. If stress transfer triggers major earthquakes across the Pacific network within hours, we would see a tsunami timeline like nothing in recorded history. Philippines, Manila. Trench, magnitude 7.2, plus earthquake generates eight meter waves. Indonesia, Sunda, megathrust, magnitude 8.0 plus triggered rupture creates 15 meter waves. Taiwan, Philippine Sea, plate, 
Magnitude 7.0 plus earthquake adds 5 meter waves. Japan, Nankai, Nankai. Trough, magnitude 8.0 plus triggered rupture generates 12 meter waves. Malaysia, continental. Shelf, magnitude 6.5 plus earthquake creates 3 meter waves. Australia, New Guinea, magnitude 7.5 plus earthquake generates 6 meter waves. Papua New Guinea, magnitude 7.0 plus earthquake creates 4 meter waves. But that's just the beginning. Computer modeling shows that these waves wouldn't remain separate. They'd create amplification zones where multiple tsunami sources converge. The South China Sea would see waves from the Philippines, Malaysia, and Indonesia converging. The Celebes Sea would experience combined Indonesian and Philippine waves. The Pacific Basin would see Japanese and Philippine waves creating interference patterns. What makes this scenario so dangerous is that current tsunami warning systems are designed for single source events. When seven countries generate tsunamis simultaneously, warning networks can't process the complexity fast enough. The technology designed to save lives from tsunamis wasn't built. Our current warning systems have four critical limitations. National focus, each country monitors its own fault systems independently. Single source modeling, Tsunami. Simulations assume one earthquake source. Communication delays. International alert systems require minutes to hours. Data processing limitations. Cannot handle simultaneous multi-country seismic input. The speed problem is the deadliest factor. Stress waves traveling at 8 km per second outpace all human response systems. Seismic detection takes 2 to 3 minutes to analyze earthquake data. Tsunami modeling requires 5 to 10 minutes to calculate wave arrival. International communication needs 10 to 15 minutes for multi-country alerts. Public warning systems need 15 to 30 minutes for evacuation orders. When the Philippines triggers a cascading earthquake sequence, affected countries have negative response time. The tsunamis arrive before the warnings. The 2025 wake-up call is clear. Recent monitoring data shows stress transfer events happening faster than our ability to detect and communicate them. We're fighting 21st century disasters with 20th century warning systems. Dr. Katsuichiro Goda from the University of Bristol warns, Cascading earthquake hazards represent a new class of disaster that our current monitoring infrastructure cannot handle. We need to completely rethink tsunami warning for the age of stress transfer. The infrastructure reality is staggering. 500 million people live within tsunami evacuation zones across the seven countries. Current evacuation capacity was designed for single country disasters. No existing protocols exist for simultaneous multinational evacuations. Port closures affect international supply chains instantly, creating secondary economic disasters. The Philippines earthquake swarm has revealed a terrifying truth. We live on a mechanically connected planet where disasters in one country automatically trigger disasters in others. The evidence is clear. Stress transfer networks are now scientifically documented across the Pacific Ring of Fire. 2025 events are happening 10 times faster than any historical precedent. Seven countries are now mechanically linked through stress transfer. Current warning infrastructure cannot handle cascading disasters. Every earthquake in the Philippines now carries the potential to trigger the big one in multiple countries simultaneously. We're not facing seven separate disasters. We're facing one interconnected catastrophe. The Philippine earthquake swarm continues building pressure across the entire Pacific network. Each tremor brings. The system is moving closer to synchronized failure. And when it comes, it will redefine our understanding of what a natural disaster can be. When stress transfer makes every earthquake an international event, how do we prepare for disasters that cross borders faster than information? If the Philippines can trigger Japan's big one in minutes, what happens to the concept of national disaster preparedness? And when 500 million people across seven countries face tsunami threats simultaneously, 
who gets saved first? We're entering the era of mechanically connected disasters, where a tremor in one country becomes a catastrophe for seven. The Philippines earthquake swarm isn't just a regional threat, it's the preview of planetary scale disasters that move faster than human response. This is Earth. Attacks bringing you the latest analysis on the Philippines earthquake swarm. If you found this information valuable, subscribe for more breaking coverage on emerging geohazards. Visit earthattacks.com for live monitoring data and exclusive expert interviews. Stay informed, stay prepared, because in the age of connected disasters, knowledge saves lives.